I pressed it now. It's too late. Mm. Are we live? Hello. Are we live? Hello. Hello. Yes, we're live. Five minutes late. That's good going, isn't it? Ah, these people <laughs> expect it by now. We were just having a discussion whether our lights were too bright. I think they are because um, we've got shiny foreheads. Um, I think yours is particularly bright. Let me turn that one down a little bit. <laughs> Slightly better. Evening all. <clears throat> it's always the same. Mad rush. And then we go, oh, look at the state of us. Sort of hair out. And then. Yeah, well, you see yourself for the first time and then you're like, oh, my goodness, what do I look like? <laughs> I pulled my toggle off. Went in the bathroom about 10 minutes ago. We've got a. Uh, this sounds all wrong. We've got a pulley thing yeah, a for the light. A bathroom light switch. And it just went ba-doing. Yeah, it's been going for a while. I don't know what why it's done that. Hold, hole's too big. It went, it pulls. Well, it's been like degrading because I, I thought perhaps you'd broken it the other day. Well, it has. I reckon it got stuck in the, stuck in the door I at one point and this bit's broke. Anyway, yeah. nobody really wants to know about that. Nobody cares. Let's be honest. We need to get one of those cool little like turned wooden ones. I think that would be cool. Yes. Something anyway, like that. that's knackered. Put that in the bin. I'm sure we could find something on eBay. Could just make the knot bigger, to be fair, and that would still work. Probably. We could probably find something on eBay. Anyway, hello. Hello. <laughs> We've not been drinking, honest. No. You've got water, I've got coffee. We're very tired, though. Very tired. We've been jumble trailing. Um, hopefully, if you saw us today say hello we we yes. lost count of how many lovely people we said hello to today it was crazy yes. what what were the names of the ones that we were going to try and remember i don't remember i remember stacy oh we oh. We've... we're so bad at remembering names and well, just have no retention for it i just <laughs> Yeah, I'm so bad. We did we did mention them in the video. We were trying we did, to film yeah, a video. We mentioned you in the video. <laughs> and then the but GoPro the, ran out. Wherever we met, it, it was very lovely to meet people today. Yeah. <laughs> and we signed our first autographs. Oh, it was all a bit weird. <laughs> because remember we told you about um, the lovely kids that we met um, at the last, not the last Jumble Trail, but at a Jumble Trail. We went to the same place for a jumble trail today and we met those kids again and their parents and um, and they asked us to sign an autograph, which was all a bit bizarre because we've never done that before. Um, <laughs> I felt a bit of a Muppet signing an autograph. Because <laughs> we're just ordinary people who just waffle on the internet. It was the same um, group of uh, kids who we bought your little cat purse off, Lex. Yeah. I did tell Lex this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. we said hello today. Helen. Oh, Helen. Hello, Helen. We met a Helen. <laughs> Hi. Was it Helen we met with? Was it her dad? Was it? Were you, were you the lady with a dad that was together? We didn't get their name. No, did we? <laughs> so <laughs> confused. I'm, I do possibly, apologize. Very possibly. Ah, Stacy. You... Yes, Stacy. Yes, Stacy. I remembered Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a, we're always a bit flustered when people come up. We do like it, but um, I think we said in the video today we're not yeah. actually that socially. We're, we're, quite... we're a bit socially awkward at the I best time. I get a bit times. socially anxious, <laughs> to be honest, when I meet people. And it's, it's, it's like, oh. it kind of takes you unawares as well. Yeah. It, we we do love it, and if you do see us out and about, say hi. It's fine. Oh, Vinny. But, Vinny. But Vinny. Yes. yes. I was with Vin. That's right. Okay. Yeah. We tried very hard to remember your names and failed. Um, but yeah, sometimes it kind of shocks you out of your little zone you're in. And then we probably look like rabbits in the head like that. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, but thanks for coming up and saying hi. Yeah, they, they uh, were at the um, store with the man with the crazy hat. He had a, you know, um, Ellen had a hat similar to that, oh. house, didn't she? Like an animal hat. Yeah, yeah. stall holder had a, like a, what was it, a dog? I'm not sure what a it was. Bear? Some, some sort of animal. With, with like great big ears, it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> she had a donk. Ellen had a donkey, hatonky. I used to call it her hatonky. Was it Helen that we met with her husband? I don't. Know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, we're waffling like crazy. We don't have anything to share because um, all of the stuff we bought today is still in the car. It was a fox. It was a fox, was it? it? Was a fox. Oh, okay. Yes. 
um yeah so this was andrea's idea to have a chat about um kind of taking the steps yes 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 helen was outside the church when they were packing up ah yes okay um, yeah, they packed up early, which was annoying. There was like mm. a whole load of stalls at the same church we went to um, about a month ago, and they packed up early. We were there in good time, and they were packing up, which was a bit frustrating. Um, so yeah, we haven't said hello to anyone in the chat, but hello. Yes, hello everybody. Um, hi Nick, thanks for the packing vid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, lots of chat. Hi Ashley. Uh, yeah. Hi Peter. Hi Lex. Hi Kelly. <laughs> Kelly says it's a good job you two record your travels, so you'd have no idea where you've been or who you saw. No, you're quite right. We would not. <laughs> well, here's the thing: um, we've done so many of these jumble trails; uh, they're really becoming quite regular down here now. Yeah, it all merges into one. It really does. Well, it was odd going to this one today because that was the the last time we went. We vlogged, and that vlog went up this week. So I'd been editing it for like a couple of days and then, you know, and then we were there again. It was really strange. <laughs> right. Yeah. Greetings from oh, Greece. Rod's in. Hi, Rod. <laughs> Is Rod in? Yay. Hey, Rod. Um, so we, we don't have stuff, but we will have a lot of stuff to share next week. Um, but we've had, well, we get continued continual questions about how what do I need to do this full time? People ask us, could I do this full time? Um, the, the simple answer to that is we don't know whether somebody else could. Um, and we got a lot of questions and there's been quite a few interesting posts going around mm -hmm. about the difficulties of taking this from a part time thing to a full time thing. Yeah. And that we do have some element of experiencing because we did it nigh on 20 years ago. James, um, James is at Ashford today. Yeah, there is another one on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, they split it into two, which is a good idea. We we couldn't get around all of what effectively yeah. was half yeah. of it this time. And people were packing up so early anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we drove around for the last half an hour and, and couldn't find a stall that was meant to be there. They'd all just gone. Yeah. We probably were a bit slow at some of the stalls, though. <laughs> we dawdled. We yeah. dawdled about. Yeah. Yes. So we thought we'd just have um, just open up a conversation today um, talking about what do you actually need to start a business? I've got sticky to up start here. an eBay business. Oh, got stray hair. Look at that bit. Look at that bit. Life of its own. I did have a massive nap when I got home and I've slept on, yeah. on my hair and it's all gone mental. Um, yeah. yeah. So what do you need in terms of not necessarily equipment, but what do you need in terms of if you wanted to go full time, um, if you're thinking of quitting your job, um, if yeah. you just wanted to do part time. So we just thought we would open up that conversation. Um, We'd love to know what you think, because he here's my initial thoughts on that when you suggested this is particularly now with the eBay app and the way technology, everybody has the equipment needed, really. You can pretty much start selling on eBay with a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd need a printer and a bit of space to put some stuff and you're away. And that's why so many people use reselling as a way to supplement their income, earn a bit of extra cash. There's very little barrier to entry, if any, to be honest. So what you physically need, most people already have. Yeah. Hence, it is a kind of go to yeah. simple to set up business. Yeah. In order to start something, all you need to do really, essentially, is buy a couple of things that are worth reselling and make that 10 pounds invest reinvest that 10 pounds make 20 etc etc on and on um, however that will take time to build up so just deciding i want to start reselling and then quit your job you could be in all kinds of trouble because yeah without any kind of capital behind you if you had some capital behind you then you could possibly do that if you had something that you knew was going to pay your wages if you weren't earning for the next year, um, then you could do you could do it that way. But otherwise, probably the better way if you wanted to quit your job and go full time is to start doing it part time and to build it up that way in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
slowly in your in your spare time you get the experience you build up a financial buffer um yeah yeah i think um when zahir and beck first went full-time and they documented um for everybody to see how difficult it was to keep that momentum going with the business when they were having to take so much money out of it so because to build up a reselling business really for the first however long it takes you need to really put a lot if not all of the profit back in and if you don't have anything behind you you can't do that because you have to take all of the the capital all the cash out of the business yeah. again and we struggled with this when we started yeah. because we did have money behind us and we had been building up the business whilst we both had jobs for at least a year before that and we still struggled with cash flow that's that's the big thing that you need is a real handle on the uh be totally honest about how much you need to make yeah. and sit down and work out the numbers yeah i think that's the biggest thing you need is is complete transparency with your finances I don't know. Does that sound sensible? Yeah, we I haven't actually so. thought through this video before doing it, <laughs> by the way, when we're flying off the cuff. Let's yeah, see. What... I can see there are some um, questions and comments that are coming through. We've got a super chat already. There Thank is a you, super the nurse chat. Flipper. Thank the you nurse. so much for your wonderful content. Oh, that's much appreciated. I love Thank that you. avatar. You've got a little flipper dolphin. Yeah. Thank you. That's that is cool. lovely. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I. Can we scroll back? So I saw a couple wait, wait, of wait. comments come through. Um, somebody, no, <laughs> keep going. Back further? You sure it was back further? Yeah, I wanted to um, address that one. You two, hi, uh, I don't know how you say that, Zainam? I'm going to go with Zainam. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Uh, you two are slightly privileged in that you've paid off your mortgage already, which makes eBay trading more sustainable for you. Yes. And we make yes. a point of mentioning that very often. Although I'm not Our, sure about the word privileged. <laughs> we achieved everything. You are right. And we achieved all of that through reselling, I would point out. Yeah. To start with, we took a strange route in that we started on eBay. We went onto the high street and then did online retail alongside high street. We then came back out once we'd achieved some financial goals we wanted. And now, yeah, we are in a financial position that we know is perhaps very different from others, but we yeah. got here through choice and hard work through reselling. Yeah. Um, but yes, and we do point that out very often. Our outgoings are minimal and we earn as hard as we need to to make it work and it works for us. Yeah, very well. But in, in, <laughs> see, I have an and issue this, with the, the word privilege because. Well, we are in a privileged position, but it, it's it's yeah. Yeah, but it makes it sound as though, you know, we just got there and we just paid off our mortgage and we don't really need to work hard. We worked hard to get to this point. So, you know, we, you know, made a lot of and, and we invested we, yeah. most of our profit in the house because we we weren't we didn't invest in a pension plan we had zero pension the house is our pension we are going to downsize at some point and cash out so um that's just touch yeah. on uh, taking ourselves back to when we first started we were renting a house we didn't own one we had a baby um we had been doing it hobbyist part-time for a while so it was you know a long while uh, yeah um, so we knew what we were doing in terms of we knew how eBay and Amazon worked. Um, we were already doing it. We had the experience. We had some savings behind us. And then we decided to quit our jobs. It was very scary. <laughs> we had uh, rent to come out. We had all the <clears throat> utilities. We had everything and a child. Um, it was an incredibly scary time. So we certainly weren't privileged when we first started no um, and it felt like um it's interesting now that we have this community and you can look around and you can see that other people do make it work and everyone's situation is very different particularly financially um yes but you can look around and, and feel kind of safe that this is doable we really felt like we were we were setting out uncharted yeah. waters with this ebay was relatively new yeah. when we tried to explain to people and family and friends why we were quitting our pretty good jobs we, really we didn't know they anybody like, else that did that you're doing you're going to do what now <laughs> we didn't know anybody else that made a living doing what we were going to no. be doing 
That's what I was trying to say. We <laughs> yeah. were in our own little bubble thinking, oh, yeah. we're making all of this up as we go along. Um, and I think these days it's a double edged sword. I think it's great for for the likes of us, certainly to have people that we can re reach out to to understand the ups and downs of what we do. But I think sometimes, and I've seen some posts recently, and you've shared some with me, where people have gone, oh, these YouTubers make it look too easy. That's mm -hmm. been said a lot recently. And I I dispute that. I think we are, we try to be very honest about how hard you have to work. We've also been very honest about our financial situation, how we got here. And because people are quite often ask, how much do you make? Nick and Andrew, how much do you make? And we don't really feel the need to share that. And it's not no, relevant it, to anyone else's situation. That's the everybody point. Everybody is different. Um, it, reselling is not one size fits all. And everybody can tailor it to your own needs, your own outgoings, your own lifestyle. You can, yeah. You can do whatever you want with reselling. That's it's the beauty of it. Let's find some uh, comments about what we touched on. Uh, uh, let's quickly go through a few. Adam, hi. What do you do to keep your mood up when you have a couple of days of slow sales? I find it really difficult to cope after having, after having really good sales. I think we've been in it long enough that we we can kind of ride over that now. But it is. I describe reselling. In fact, most self-employment as a roller coaster, you know, the highs can be really high and the lows can be painfully low. And sometimes from day to day in reselling, you, you see that up and down, certainly week to week, month to month. Um, but I think we've been in the game long enough that we. We've come out the other side of the dips, if you like, that many times we actually were recommend. Now, what was it? I think we were watching YouTube on perhaps another channel, my Depeche Mode channel or something, and we were recommended one of our old videos, oh, which, which is up. It was because I have a, I don't have a channel, but I have, you know, a different an account of you, accounts, yeah. so I can view, so people don't think I'm Nick <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I comment. Um, yeah, we we were recommended the video where we had to close down. We went back into retail about I don't like four, you. about <laughs> four years ago. <laughs> Um, and set up a second-hand clothing outlet, mm. and it failed. It failed miserably. <laughs> and we watched the video of us closing that down, and um, that was a big low for us. We Huge lost a lot low. of money. We put our heart and soul into it, as we, as we do with everything we try, and, and that failed. And I made an, a video actually a long time ago about how we got to where we are now, and I remember chatting with Mel on her channel about that, and we have had more failures than successes. And that's another thing that I perhaps isn't talked about. Who wants to focus on the failures, right? My first record shop didn't make any money. I started an, a, a magazine-based mail order company, completely failed. Yeah, um, interestingly, it was called Magpie Music. Magpie Music. Yeah. <laughs> was it, did I cut, was it Magpie? Yeah, no, yeah. Magpie CDs it was called. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Now, of course, Music Magpie is one of the nation's biggest secondhand uh, yeah, yeah. traders. Anyway, um, I, I don't know where say, I was going with that. <laughs> Jack <laughs> but... Robbins basically said, um, yeah, that's what I did because I had to look after a newborn baby. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I worked, lived in Hertfordshire, worked in Slough, and it was a heck of a journey to, there and back every day. And while I was on maternity leave, it was just, it was a no brainer. It was like, okay give up my job or <laughs> you know mm. or do that commute every day and then I don't get to spend that time with Ellen so yeah yeah no brainer well going back to the initial premise of this um what do you need not a lot to be honest to get started but what I think you need is a kind of reality check of how difficult and um, potentially it could be that's what you really need potentially yes um yeah, you need some kind of you need something behind you. You need a contingency plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think you need the reality of th this is not a get rich scheme type of business. It Pe can be. People can Depends do very well out of it. it. Yeah. yeah. But we genuinely took this route as a lifestyle choice. We wanted to, mm. to carve our own path. We wanted to get out of the rat race, not have a boss looking over our shoulder um, That's a big one. We we took on many other stresses that replaced those, but.
but we're much more comfortable with the financial stresses we had for a long time before we we got to the position we're in now yeah. um we were happier with that than what we felt was a big stress in our life which was working for the man right yeah um so basically I, don't go into it without preparation yeah you know be prepared for what you you need and what you know if work on worst case scenario which is what you always do in terms of yeah you know, have enough behind you yeah. so if it all goes wrong for a couple of months you can pay your way what happens if you get ill you know mm -hmm. uh, there's there's 101 things that could go wrong yeah. when you're self-employed that if you haven't got a contingency plan things can go horrible very quick yeah um, i just want to read out nurse flipper again says i put everything back in the first year so i assume you mean reinvesting the profit and now have built it up from only a couple of hundred into over 70k in inventory Fantastic. selling over 10k a month there you go and that does not happen overnight yeah um absolutely and when we built up our retail business we started with so little and we put everything back in for at least the first 12 to 24 months yeah. and we're paying ourselves less than minimum wage for all of that time in order to build up the stock and the, the inventory get accounts with all of the major retailers build up all of the catalog of, of new stock and 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 get some money in the business, get some capital in the business. It was hard, hard work. Yeah. So a similar comment there. I started with 60 quid and now have 9K listed and building every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and that wouldn't have happened overnight. I think some of the uh, social media posts we've seen recently have perhaps been from people that went in all guns blazing and then realised, hold on, I still need to take out whatever it is they need to fund their lifestyle. And that's the bit that varies immensely. Yeah, or to reinvest in stock. So, because if you can't buy the stock, you can't yeah. make the money. And what I was going to say about um, Tahir and Beck, and I stopped earlier, was that they documented their struggle with, with trying to build a business whilst trying to still take enough out to live on. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the reality check of it um, when you try and jump from part-time to full-time. That's the really tricky complicated bit yeah um sorry so 50 trooper says i think if you go straight to reselling have at least six months saved to really get you going without the stress of losing a wage absolutely yeah and that's the first thing that you will miss if you're coming from a monthly paycheck into reselling is that paycheck is not a reality anymore some months it's not there <laughs> And some months it's great. And then yeah. the next month it might be shockingly bad. And and to to cope with that is a huge, huge adjustment. So that's we 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 set out the title of this um as what do you need? And and I think we instantly thought, well, you need you need a computer, you need <laughs> yeah. you need no no no. no. Yeah. What you need is um a very long look at yourself and your financial situation and to lay out exactly what you need to get out of a business to be comfortable yeah. or to pay your way. That's what you need is to sit down and have that conversation, which isn't very easy, I think, the reality of how much you need to make. Um, let's dip in the chat again. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was a yes, jump. It's just jumped. Was a... I don't know where it's gone to. Where? Well, should you go, be able to go back to the one that's highlighted? It was just the one underneath the one that was highlighted. How do I go back to the one that's highlighted? Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, we're way behind. We are. Oh, no, I think we've lost it. OK, well, what does Lex say there? Right. Hide current, current comments. Sorry, we're, <laughs> we're so far behind already. Talking too much. Hi, Lex. Going full time should be a natural progression from part time. You go full time when it's more lucrative to invest your time into reselling rather than your real job. That's a very yes. good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you see, in order to know that, you need to be very honest about what you're making, how much you need, you know. So, yeah, totally agree. I like this. Um, privilege equals sacrifice other things to get where you are now. Absolutely. That's spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, keep, I keep noticing what I called this. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to scroll? Let me scroll. Yeah. Scrolly, scrolly. 
um it's certainly not always easy no and and there have been a few posts recently that have openly you know said these youtubers make this look easy no george's comment yeah make it look easy have you seen the state of my tires at the start of the boot sale video tired eyes i think that's meant to say Ti tires are tire <laughs> state tired of my eyes. tires <laughs> my tired <laughs> eyes <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think I've said many times in response to posts like that is if someone told you this was easy, they lied. Um, it, it can be fun. It is incredibly rewarding. And um, I don't think we would change it or change much about it. But it's yeah. not. But it's a lot of hard work. Um, yeah. Um, Ashley says resilience is a must. So you can cope with the sporadic nature of eBay and to not take things personally, definitely. I mean, when we first started eBay, it wasn't as it is now. No. It was so much more consistent and you felt like well, it, was it was more friendly. reliable. <laughs> it was just... Do you think so? What, financially? No, well, no, just the platform. Oh, right. The platform was consistent and reliable. And right. I feel like it just changes every day. Well, it was simple. Days. They have overcomplicated <laughs> eBay to the nth yeah. degree now. I think and there are days where, you know, so many people in the community are all saying at the same time, what's going on? The sales are so low. I mean, even on like Facebook groups, yeah. um, you know, big sort of business people that we met at, when we visited eBay that time, have got bigger businesses than us on eBay. They've been saying recently, it's not, you know, what's going on? I'm just, hmm. my sales are down more than they've ever been. And well, things just not working like i can't upload photos today that's great <laughs> yeah. that stuff never used to happen and it, it keeps saying it's not you it's us <laughs> yeah it's always you ebay <laughs> um i was gonna say one of the big talking about big differences from i mean we we got onto ebay i think it was 98 i set my account up first account it may not be the one we currently have um and i started selling in 98 and the platform was very basic mm. but that was good in many ways there wasn't 101 things to go wrong that there is now but the biggest difference i think and let me know if you agree in the chat which we are about 100 miles behind um i think it was a much more friendly place it was a place collectors went to buy stuff for their collection it was a place it was very much about having a chat with your buyer or seller there was no rush you know Oh, I'll send you a check sometime next week. Send it out. At, you know, yeah. There was no pressure from eBay to do things in a certain way. It was very much it's more relaxed. Relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, there were flaws in that, and in if somebody did want to rip you off, then you had <laughs> very little comeback, which they've tried to address. Mm, let's not go there. It's not the video for that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I think eBay now has become much more they are much more controlling over mm. what you can and can't do as a seller yeah, it feels almost more like they're trying to be our boss these days and not yeah. realizing we're actually their customers <laughs> that's what amazon's like amazon is like having a boss again and we do this to not have a boss yeah. i've gone backwards and forwards with quitting amazon this whole year oh i know funnily well, well, enough we we're now doing very well out of it currently <laughs> we didn't have anything there for a while did we yeah i know that was you know, ran all of my stock in down. some ways but oh you um, highlighted yeah, kirsten. kirsten says all retailers like that are roller coaster which is quite yeah. right um, well physical retail is almost um worse because you're kind of sat there in a physical place and it's it's very obvious when you don't have any customers because you sit there twiddling your thumbs hopefully keeping busy because we used to have the online thing so we kind of focus on that when we yeah. were quiet yeah but it's it's very pronounced and it's it's fascinating watching going back to Zahir and Beck again, watching them go through yeah, what really Kirsten is. would have gone yeah. through with hers and us with our several forays into the retail world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, total roller coaster. I mean, we got broken into a couple of times. It it nearly destroyed me when that happened. It did. That was yeah. Oh. Yeah, lying on the floor among broken glass, going, "That's it, I give up." <laughs> I laid on, the, I laid on the shop floor like that. I said, "I'm done, I'm done with this yeah. now." No. Um, Aaron says the same thing um, about it being a roller coaster. Yes, Aaron, totally. Um, and Fat Girl Sewing says, "Privileged is more like someone that was given a house. They budgeted, 
Are they budgeted to put themselves in a great situation that allows their financial situation to be where it is at today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely where we are now was a decision we made about 15 years ago. A super chat. So. Um, it, it was a very, very clear cut focused decision. This is where we're going and this is how long it's going to take us to get there. And we've got to work really hard to achieve that. And we did. So that's that's what it was. Um, hi, Elliot. Hi, Elliot. Thank you. Um, says thanks for the great content. I'm just starting out reselling. What type of items are best to start with? I was thinking media. That's certainly how we started. But then it was a little bit more. Well, um, CDs were actually worth money back yeah. then. <laughs> um, I would say media is great because it's very easy to list, very easy to package. Uh, you can turn it over fairly quick if you price it right. So it's good to get the feedback going. But generally, there isn't much money in it. It's a good way to, to mm -hmm. get to grips with eBay, perhaps. Um, like I say, quick and easy to package, that sort of stuff. But we tend to say with people who want to start, what what do I start selling? Go with what you know. If you're into gaming, start with gaming because you'll already have a head start on the knowledge, right? Um, we started with CDs and, and videos as it was back in the old days <laughs> because we had a, a retail background. We worked for Virgin Records uh, and our price. We'd been in retail media retail for and years have a love of music yeah and it's our yeah. passion so we naturally yeah. started there because it was easy for us and enjoyable that's the key if you can make it enjoyable yeah. like you'll have seen me recently playing with kids toys <laughs> right that's my job well sometimes you spent quite a long time brushing a pony's hair the other day. <laughs> is it a pony is it a, it's a horse it's a horse really but yeah oh dear I, I can't actually say I enjoyed that. <laughs> no. I can't actually say that was enjoyable. It's incredibly tedious. Um, Basil says, when did you start eBay? It sounds like <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, late 90s, but went full time 2002. Yeah, I discovered eBay 98 when I was trying to build a collection for myself. I went into eBay as a buyer, um, buying Nintendo stuff for a collection, game and watches. Quickly realised wow, these things go for a fortune online. And then realized, I, I just need to go out and find them at Jumble Sales. That's what I need to do. And that's where the penny clicked. You can buy stuff, boot sales, Jumble Sales, wherever, and then put it online. And I quickly became a seller, not a buyer on eBay. Um, yeah. 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 Um, hi, Becca. Um, Becca says, thankfully, I already had things to a decent level on eBay, and I know I'm in the minority of people who managed to suddenly scale up to cover all my outgoings within two weeks. Bloody hard work, though. Wow. Becca works very hard. Yeah. And that that last four words there is the bit that, that perhaps needs to be said more. I mean, if there is something that we as YouTubers are perhaps guilty of, it's looking on the bright side of things. As a self-employed person, you have to or else you go mad, right? Focus on the positives, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but we yeah. do try and, and reiterate what you've just said there, that it's bloody hard work to get this going, to keep it going, to sustain it every day. You know, you have a good day in sales, yeah. that's great. But you, what are you going to do tomorrow? You had a great week. Yeah, that's gone now. Focus on next week. It's it's relentless. It's, it's, a, it's a roller coaster you can't get off. <laughs> Yeah, um, flip it, ship it. So it took me three years to get going. Very good money in selling, but it's a seven day a week job. It's it is. <laughs> it can be. I don't be. think we ever have a real day off, do we? Now that's the uh, the big reality. Um, going back to you, what what do you need to be a full time reseller? Is is the un to understand that it's a lifestyle choice and it can take over your life. And finding you hear this said a lot about work life balance. How long we've we been doing this? Yeah, nearly 20 years. Have we, have we figured that one out yet? No. No. Well, you haven't. <laughs> but at the same time, we have made a life choice to do this because it gives us a better quality of life. Yeah, I so, enjoy what I do. Yeah. And that is worth, you know, spending all day today traipsing around a jumble trail. Yeah. It's work, but yeah. we still enjoyed it. We did it together. We had a laugh. Yeah, some people would say, why are you spending all that time sourcing? You know, can we invest in your time a bit better than that? Or, you know, 
whatever comment but we do that because it's fun <laughs> and because we enjoy it yeah and we spend time together and yeah it's good um Steve says hi Steve hi Steve <laughs> I says I really struggled with taking the risk to go full time I wouldn't have if I hadn't walked out if I hadn't walked away with a large chunk of change from my redundancy yeah yeah so you had that buffer right to give you that little bit of kind of leeway for if all of this goes tits up you've still got enough to tide you over you know what i mean yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> am i in the wrong chat hi see it seems ebay related i know right who'd have thought um hi neil um neil says plan a pension we don't actually have a pension do we this building is our pension uh or a retirement plan we don't plan to retire <laughs> holiday pay no <laughs> pay ourselves when we go on holiday <laughs> um medical or other benefits you may be given up if quitting work that that's the big reality of, of the change from being employed to yeah. being self-employed you don't automatically have any of that in place yeah yeah so again what do you need if you're thinking of going full-time you need to sit down and have that discussion with yourself and say me weigh it up seriously there are so many benefits of being employed um yeah yeah so um tom tack shack tom says i'm on my 15 day in a row working whew, working three jobs so i can one day do full-time reselling but need the investment with three kids, I can't just build it up looking to buy, to bulk buy. Yeah. This is it. And and you yeah. will find the way that works for you. And and there's not a one one thing fits all for that either, is there? You know? Um, absolutely. You you make it work how it works for you. Um it's fascinating. A lot of the questions we get seem really naive, but of course, the other side of this is um perhaps another video is we'll do at some point is talking about the the real basics because i think we forget a lot of time that people find this channel and have never sold on ebay and they don't even understand the basics of how it works yeah. and a lot of people have all of those questions still and perhaps we don't cater to that but yeah i went on a tangent then i don't know what i was answering <laughs> but <laughs> yeah so george says it's all well and good having the equipment and funds but probably the most important thing going full-time is the passion for doing this i absolutely love it I will always be doing it in some way. Exactly. There have been times, we're not going to lie, when, you know, we've been down, especially at that time with the shop, and consider giving it up, consider going back to working. I mean, there have mm. been times where you said, I'm just going to just gonna go get yeah. a job. But, um, but we don't because we love what we do and it's worth doing for us. Yeah. So... Yeah, exactly. And and that shows, George, in, in what in your content that you put out, you know, and I think that is an element that, that you need. You need to love reselling to do it full time because. Because of all the things we've said in this video. <laughs> yeah. And then Tatna Teapot, hi, says, um, buy what interests you. Take good photos and write a great description and it will come across to the buyer. I get a bit put off as a buyer. When there's no details or the photos are crap. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, hello, hello in Germany. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. Good to see you. Yeah, that that's it. it might not all be about money though. You might choose the freedom over the money. Yes. Yeah. We did not choose to sell secondhand bits and bobs on eBay to get rich. <laughs> we chose it as a way out yeah and, uh, and stuck and stuck with lifestyle. it you know we, we never i if you'd have asked us back then do you think you'll be doing this in another like 20 years we'd have gone no this is what we can do right now to to, to get out mm. of the rat race and spend all of our time with this tiny baby it was just a solution to a problem really wasn't it yeah. we weren't happy in our jobs we wanted to both be at home to parent ellen and we knew we could do this selling thing didn't even hadn't even heard of the word reselling then no. we, we can we can selling sell on stuff on the on 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 ebay that seems yeah. to work let's do it that was as far as it went but yeah. yeah it was a means to an end and it still is 
Yeah. And then discovered we could sell on Amazon as well. And that was like, oh, wow, this Ooh, is good. Hello. We can scan stuff and, you know, yeah. on Amazon. Oh, I bought some stuff, for, probably all for Amazon today. We bought a shed load of brand new cookery books. Yeah, that was quite something. We'll share that next week. Yeah, everything's quarantining. <laughs> um, so RRP Slasher says, I've been self-employed for the last eight years. Sadly, I've had a, a big operation and it stopped me from doing my job. So I had to think quick what to do. By watching YouTube, I just jumped straight in. Wow. Yeah. yeah it can provide a good alternative if you, yeah. Especially at this time. I mean, you know, a lot of people are losing their jobs. And, you know, or they're on furlough and they're not making enough money to to buy food. Yeah. Um, yeah, it provides a, a great way to making a bit of extra money i think a lot of people are looking for an alternative right now yeah and like you said you don't know what life's going to throw at you and and you've had a big operation and that's that's turned your life upside down yeah. but this is something most people can do from home and bring some money in almost straight away it's perfect for that yeah but then if your ambition is to go full-time what do you need you need to really sit down and look at exactly that what you need to get out of it and how are you going to achieve that because doing it part-time you don't have the pressures of having to earn whatever it is you need to keep your lifestyle going it's just a bonus right anything you make when you're part-time is just a bonus brilliant um but full-time has a whole net another level of pressure yeah oh that's a big question isn't it <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> cashless society. I, I find it hard to imagine the cashless society, yeah. but we've already seen even at jumble trails, people coming out with little PayPal boxes. Um, I can see a point where they get where you just kind of touch phones together or something and transfer money. Or yeah. it's probably all going that way. I don't know. Is the answer? Mm. <laughs> we just don't. Um, Kieran's looking forward to giving his mag the magazines to his dad. So oh, hi, Kieran. Yeah, Kieran very kindly bought some uh, magazines from us. I hope they've turned up now all the way to Ireland. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for yeah. that. And Sue Bad Wolf says, definitely all about the freedom to me, not the money. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we need the money to live and survive. But, you know, if you can survive on less and it's more about the freedom and the lifestyle for you then this is yeah it's a good way of you know going back to the um, money <laughs> going back to our very calculated decision to pay off our mortgage and put ourselves in a in a in a safe financial position we were earning a lot of money at one point when the shop really took off and we could have been living some lavish lifestyle but we paid off a house instead that's that yeah. that was the decision we made yeah um and we're not into fancy cars or expensive clothes and all of that no. business. <laughs> Andrea's Mini was our one out there purchase for us. And that one yeah. really, that was because we sold that Atari yeah. car. <laughs> and when, when we gave your sister a lift home, um, Jo, she was saying, oh, your car is so pretty. She's added a couple of beers. Oh, your car is so pretty. I know that you love this car. And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Global Thrift has said 5 a.m. dark, cold mornings at the car boots are not for the faint hearted. No, exactly. I remember no. having a conversation with somebody again in the comments or on a post somewhere about um, I, I think I'd put out a video and shared some really nice finds I had. And somebody kept saying in the comments, yeah, he's so lucky. He always finds this thing. And I remember saying I was lucky I got up at 6 a.m. I was lucky I walked around that field in the dark. I was lucky I rummaged in that box. I was lucky. No, you put yourself in that place to find that thingy, right? And um, what's the other phrase somebody gave me? Uh, isn't it funny how hardworking people are very lucky? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we were talking about this the other day, actually, and I said, yeah, there's a – I think I was talking to Steve, and it, it was like, yeah, and it annoys me when people say, you're so lucky you have such a well-behaved child. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> spent years like <laughs> training this child <laughs> yeah many many battles yeah. yeah hey kenneth yeah so kenneth says that if it wasn't so uh, expensive with the shipping from um, denmark he would go all in on ebay yeah right 
yeah so it's different everywhere isn't it um yeah and then um gavin undercover arbitrage says the reality is it's a tough gig and it took me over 10 years to start earning good money there you go yeah there's there's the reality check if anybody wanted one and of course it's not everyone's experience and there will be that somebody out there who hit the ground running with ebay and is now a multimillionaire. there will be that person but that's the exception that proves the rule okay yeah. generally this is a lifestyle choice and it's hard work um but it's very rewarding and a lot of fun at the same yeah. time it's hard to describe really yeah and there are so many it, things that I just love about what we do in terms of selling secondhand. I love the fact that we keep things out of landfill. We repurpose things. We keep things, you know, in circulation. And, yeah, I just love all that. Um, and then Sarah says, I was forced to leave a well-paid full-time job when my son became very sick. As a single parent, reselling saved us from using food banks. Six years on, we're self-sufficient and full-time reselling. Wow. Yeah. That's an incredible story. That's brilliant. And I think that's where a lot of people are finding themselves this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think there will be a lot of people turning to to online retail to um, to supplement incomes. Yeah. And um, people trawling the internet and ending up finding our random channels and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Dr. Laurie says, do it. You can succeed. Yeah. Positive thinking. <laughs> yeah. You do need a lot of positive mental attitude to get through. Uh, lots of people have mentioned the ups and downs of this and, and to, to keep plowing on being self-employed when there's that alternative of going out and having a job and, you know, getting a monthly wage. Um, keeping positive in this or in yeah. any self-employment is can be a battle. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it is still a struggle for us now. Can be. Yeah. Um, Jackie B says, I'm thinking of finding a part time job to cover my bills while I build my reselling. While I build my reselling side, it started to pick up, but might need some to find some storage as my spare room is tiny. Yeah, <laughs> that sums up the problems yeah. we've all had, you know, keeping creating enough income to make things work sometimes means, yeah, you supplement your income with a part time job. Space working from home is a constant battle for so many people that we know within the community, us included. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Louise says, I'm com currently a franchise of a bigger organisation and I can't wait to be completely my own boss, but would probably never work for someone else now despite working 14 hour days. Wow. Yeah. Um, Leanne Shaw says, when I started, I won't lie, I was, OMG, this is so much fun. Um, then came. came came the progression of sales and how much hard work comes into it, not taking it things personally is also hard. Yeah. 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 Especially when customers are difficult. <laughs> yeah. There, there is a definite mental shift when you go from part time very little pressure kind of isn't this a fun gig look i make money doing fun things and then full time and yeah it's trying to scale things up and still keep it fun it does lose an edge of that that fun hobby when it's suddenly your main source of income or your only source of income yeah and ash garners have been similar storage issues <laughs> yeah I'm only doing this part time. Having enough space to store stock is a real struggle. It's not just stock, but boxes, etc. Yep. Yep. We've all been there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kenneth says the reality of being self employed and how you get on the right path to maybe success is when you get knocked off the horse, get back up. You get knocked off again, get back up. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, successful people generally are the ones who who keep just keep going, <laughs> refuse to quit, um, and that certainly described our early years in business. We we failed at most things continually <laughs> until we got it right. Global thrifters say good days, bad days, technical issues, and being surrounded by tat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's our reality flip it ship it very hard work when sales are low you need to list this list mm. yes indeed oh 
JM says, hi, guys. It was ama amazing to see you both today. Sorry ah, for being so socially awkward. We're the same. My <laughs> wife and I were starstruck. Um, we watch all your videos and got excited to see you. Mega love from Leatherhead. Trying to think which guys they were. Is that the couple at the church, maybe? Were you the we guys did, we chatted did to? Did we a couple in someone's garden? I don't know. <laughs> we we met somebody. I don't know if this was uh, these guys uh, who had met Depeche Mode. Oh, yeah. And, and had a kiss. A bit jealous. <laughs> um alicia says i left a full-time job to get into the dream move of being my own boss then reality hit <laughs> and ended up back in a full-time job and now we sell part-time yeah that's true for many people i, I would imagine being self-employed will not suit everybody and and reselling certainly does not suit everybody um and and the lure of having lure? a wage lure? the lure <laughs> Yeah, do, do it's a real thing. The allure. The allure. What's that from? from Miranda. Miranda. Oh, yeah. Um, and Elizabeth Gibbs says, I am in only able to start reselling as my husband has a job and an income. Yeah, that's a great position to be in as well. If you've got an income from one partner and then you've got the reselling, you've got that constant income from a, well, a known quantity that's going to come in once a month, right? So you've got that kind of cushion. That'd be perfect. Yeah, we I were just saw... so far behind. It's unbelievable. <laughs> this always happens when we when we ask chat to get involved. We that, can't keep we've up. We've already answered that one. That's why I'm saying we're so oh, far behind. Oh, my word. <laughs> Let's whiz through a few. I'll just read some out. Had my first few weeks ever just recently. Sales are picking back up. Good to hear it, Aidan. eBay needs to get the basic problem sorted out. Tell me about it. It frustrates me that they keep adding layers of complication when they're not sorting out the basics. Lex bloody loves what she does. <laughs> so do we. Earning a pretty good wage from it too. Yeah. Is an awesome bonus. Lex yeah. is doing amazingly. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. How much his a question that comes up a lot is, is there a magic number of how many items I need listed to earn a consistent wage or whatever? I, I don't subscribe to any of that. No. And as I, I said, with to start with, all you, you just need two items you can make a profit on. And then you reinvest that and then you reinvest the next amount and next amount and just build it up that way. So you, you don't need a great deal of, of stock if you've got with. the right stock you'll list it and it will sell straight away so zero inventory is a nice place to be <laughs> yeah. L list it and sell it continually yeah. um but i know there are people that work on differently that they're, they're they sell x percentage of their stock a week so they need x amount of inventory to make it work but i don't think there's a magic number and there's not a one size fits all solution to that um but how much stock is it ideal to have in the beginning? I think it's more about having stock that will sell and make you good money rather than lots of it in the beginning. Oh, yeah. We actually watched that last night because it came up on my recommended feed. We had the week from hell that week. Oh, I've skipped right to the bottom. We had a, a customer who was spreading all of this gossip on uh, mums groups about Andrea we had uh, a couple come in the shop and distract Andrea and steal her brand new phone um, we also had a massive like five grand rent bill come in the same week um, yeah we watched it back and we we could see how stressed we were yeah well you could see how stressed you were definitely at that I mean, point uh, we my, both were, but, um, I was reselling to camera, pay the rent just, and everything yeah but yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, don't want to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so James, no, James. That, yes, it was James Moore. Um, I think you don't realise how many people's lives you've touched. Um, I stumbled across one of your videos a few years ago when I wasn't in a good place job-wise, and it's helped loads. That's really good to hear, James. Good, <laughs> thank you. Good, and we've <laughs> always said that. That was. That's pretty much the point of this. To if we can help to inspire someone or or give someone the the thought, I can do this, but it won't be easy. Um, great, thank you for just that. Just to say, the chat's jumped and we've lost a load from above. So I'm sorry if we've missed out anyone's 
comments or questions and if we do miss it out and you want to ask it again then we'll try and read it out um yeah so rod says i have a photo of a lathe on my shed on my shed wall to remind me why i choose to do reselling to stay away from machine shops right yeah, yeah interesting someone was asking before do you think working as a couple we make twice as much as we would individually i i, I don't really know we never really look at it like that um i don't know <laughs> no, difficult to know um 621 so, watching dave 636 oh, wow. watching Hello, is that a record i don't know i don't know Get, can everyone press the thumbs up see if we can beat our thumbs up record <laughs> press it all at once see, let's watch, watch that number shoot up <laughs> um hi grant resales says i saw the cookery books and the thermos flask stand i saw the <laughs> cookery books and the thermos flasks yeah that's not that's flasks were nice I like we probably those. should have bought them we bought all of the cookery books in the end yeah i don't know just wasn't in that headspace i bought the celery the saddler celery pot though oh that was from the stall at the end yeah. of that street if you're lucky enough to find a niche product don't open a youtube channel and tell everyone <laughs> there's some good advice don't tell the secrets <laughs> has ellen shown any interest in reselling yes yes she's been dabbling in reselling but she's much more into creating her own products. She's been making crocheted pumpkins. Well, they're not to resell though, are they? No, she hasn't been reselling though. She's made some uh, really earrings? cool earrings though. Yeah. She's made Halloween bat earrings. Yeah. Well, she made a, a, three different types of Halloween earrings um, and she's working on some Christmas designs. We should link Ellen's. Can we link I Ellen's have store? I on my Instagram. Ah. <laughs> On Andrea's Instagram, you might be able to find a link for Ellen's yeah. stuff. She's on Etsy. She's Nelly's store. If anyone wants to have a look. How do, how do you um, write Nelly's store? Uh, <laughs> Is it Nelly apostrophe sure S? I'm not sure if it's Nell, Nelly's, Nelly's store or Nelly's store. I'm going to have to check. Like that. Um, let me check. We'll pop it in the chat in a second. You can go over and have a look. Hi, Sue. Again, almost anyone can start, but to sustain it, you need focus, instinct, passion, patience, tenacity, resilience, energy, faith in yourself. Support from family is helpful for the house full of tat. Absolutely. Yes, yes to all of that. It's like that. Nelly Store. Nelly Store. All one word. Yeah. That's Ellen's Instagram. No, yeah. not Instagram. Well, oh. she is actually on Instagram as Nelly Store. What's that then? Etsy. Um, that's Etsy. Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Sue, definitely. And, you know, Sue's seen a lot of up and downs. Uh, we caught up with Sue recently and yeah. it's not easy, right, Sue? And we've been there. Talk to any reseller. If they're being honest, they've had weeks where it's like, what on earth am I doing with my life? Right? Yeah seriously and if you've not had those moments you're doing amazingly well oh yeah thrifty troop says my friends don't seem to understand my ebay side hustle is my main hustle these days side hustle oh <laughs> don't you hate that <laughs> it's just one of those buzzwords isn't it um uh downside is wholesalers don't like to deal with resellers from home do you have any suggestions we found it hard getting wholesale accounts, even when we set up our high street store. Mm. Um, it is about convincing them you're a legitimate business. Yeah. And you're right. I think people don't take you seriously if you don't have a bricks and mortar store. And even when we did, we found it hard to deal with the likes of Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft. Um, it's about being belligerent, I found. Lots and lots of phone calls. Yeah, but we haven't ever had a wholesale account working at home. From home, no. We've... So. we've We've not gone that route. No. Um, James, I hadn't heard of reselling. I never realised it was a thing. <laughs> and I'd kind of already started doing a little. But after watching some of your videos for guidance, it set me on a lifestyle track. Cool. That uh, is really good well, to hear. Exactly. Before, I think even before you did YouTube, we didn't know reselling was a thing. <laughs> yeah i remember watching um, some of the 
it was guys in America that I found on YouTube. And it was like, oh, people doing what I do. Oh, isn't this cool? Yeah. And there were people talking about retail arbitrage. And I was like, I've been doing that for years. It has a name. <laughs> I remember chatting to Andrea. There's people talking about what, you know, we've been going to Tesco, buying up all the Harry Potter. There's people talking about that in America. Yeah. We thought we were like doing some secret thing. Yeah. So Stephen says, I work for a well-paid company. Um, but not happy. I'm being laid off with a good pay. Um, I've done reselling. I've done reselling for a year now, and it made me feel so much happier, even with the ups and downs. And that, Stephen, thank you for the comment. Kind of sums it up, really. You know, yeah, you're happier, so that's worth more than the money, right? Yeah. It's yeah, definitely. Oh, Robert Collins has a mini. Yeah, they are. They're good. Yeah. I'm a mini girl now. <laughs> We're very tempted by the electric mini. Yes. Not cheap, though. <laughs> I don't think we'd be able to afford it now. We'll in a few years' time, maybe. I'd like to get a secondhand electric and, and get into that world um, for sure. I'd replace mine, maybe, with an electric if uh, I could find one with enough space in it. Because our car's great for moving a lot of stock at once. The big Ford. Yeah. So Lucy says it's all about making the effort to the goodies don't come to you. Exactly. You have to discover them. Yeah. Yep. Nobody, I I think going back to that, you you were so lucky to find that thing in your thing in my job at the jumble sale. It's like, no, I put myself there. Got myself out of bed, queued up, or was first at the queue at the jumble sales to be that lucky because I got there an hour early and sat on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Vincent says dedication will always win. Yes. Um, Even if you do find something good, you have to have the knowledge to know that it's good. Brilliant point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mr. Sprout says, hi, guys, I've been self-employed for 30 years and it's hard. It's not nine to five. It's 24 seven. But the freedom is great. But be prepared to fail or learn how not to do it that way. Yes. Yes, Pete. Yes. So Mr. Sprout is Pete. Watch us forget that. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Being prepared to fail, coming into another thing that you need, if you're, if you're thinking, I'm going to go into this full time, that looks brilliant. Yeah, let's do that. Another thing you need is, is to know those things, that it's going to be hard work and, and to know that you will mess up. Yeah. You will make loads of mistakes. It will be difficult. Exactly. If you go into it with your eyes open, I think you're you're going to be better off because it won't be such a surprise when it happens. So from one Pete to another, hardest work I've ever done, best work I've ever done. Love it. Brilliant. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, what's that? Sue, one. I don't know if you thought, I thought that, that Sue was talking about the, the cookery books we saw today. Oh, God, cookery books, Nick. Bet you can't beat me. I've got 280 odd in the garage, bought for £12.50. Yeah, oh no, you've beaten me. Um, I paid £2 a book because they are pretty much bang up to date, all brand new. Um, Nigella Lawson's and Jamie Oliver's and Harry Biker's. And they're the sort of ones that are going for 15 to 20 on Amazon. So if we can, I think I'm eligible to sell the ones that I scanned at least. I'm going to send them all in and, and hopefully shift them all at Christmas. If we could make a eight to ten pound profit on each one, we'll do well because we it was only fifty, but they were blooming heavy when the car was like it was sunk down when we put them all in. Yeah, um, it's Haley Beanie says kind of like we're selling, but I've sold so much just through Facebook, nearly a hundred pounds worth of goods that would otherwise have been binned or charity shopped. Very happy. There you go. Fantastic. Yeah. Lots of music. Oh, yeah, yeah. 80s um, tunes. Lee got to 1,000 subs. Oh, well Congratulations. done, Lee. Congratulations, Lee. Is, is Lee in? I don't know yeah, if he's in. Yeah, I think he ah. is. Yeah, someone talking about 80s tunes. Yeah, this room is full of 80s music all day. I'm currently playing an awful lot of erasure, going through an erasure obsession at the minute. They've got a new album out. Um, yeah. Elizabeth doesn't dry. Oh, you saw that. How much do you think this will be a problem? Again, you've got to make it work for you. Steve, speak to Steve. Steve doesn't drive and makes it work. 
you've got to be resourceful. Perhaps that's a word we haven't touched on in this. Another thing that you will need is the ability to work things out for yourself, the ability to solve problems. If you're going to be in any sort of self-employed business, you will have problems. You can't predict them, but there will be many, many problems. Um, and if not having transport is your problem, you need to be resourceful and make it work. Um, but yeah, Steve does well and still not driving, uses public transport or taxis or whatever you yeah, need Darren to. Darren doesn't drive, does he? No, but uh, Pam does. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, hi, Steve. It says, uh, my wife, Alexa, and I have only been doing reselling seriously for the last 18 months alongside our full time jobs. But I can't imagine the house not being full of quality used merchandise now. <laughs> 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 yes yeah. oh our merch is almost ready to go <gasps> we're actually going to do oh, yes. this we're actually going to release some well, things you can buy <laughs> nick did upload a load of um designs that we we talked about and decided on but i went off to bed and then you did it and when i came down in the morning you'd put like hashtag nick and andrew and i went i don't like that well <laughs> don't do that and then it was, was agreed when other people looked at it that it Take the that placement of it certainly didn't work so we need to redo them oh, we weren't sure we wanted anything to do with us on them we, 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 we won't reveal what they are but they're like hopefully amusing and you know um things that people can relate to statements about reselling essentially and i think it was here i was chatting to and he said you've got to have something that says nick and andrew on it people want to buy something that's to do with you and i was like really oh i feel a bit weird about that yeah so we ended up putting that on and now andrew wants me to redo everything with it taken off yeah but i just <laughs> also the placement of it just yeah. doesn't but work they're coming and they'll be here before christmas <laughs> honest um silver hair um stacker says retired teacher here reselling is the best retirement supplement income ever yeah yeah fantastic Uh, Robert Connor says, my cousin used to be in Red Dwarf. Um, she wrote a book many years ago. She buys her own book on eBay for a pound, etc., signs them and sells them at Comic, <laughs> comic Con. <laughs> Fantastic. That's amazing. <laughs> Buying your own book and signing it. Yeah. Wow. that That's using your initiative. Can't you just get them from the pub? And perhaps it's out of print. I'd imagine it's out of print then, if that's the only way you can get hold of it. Okay. Um, so Louise says that during COVID, I've had to pivot my business twice since March. Paid paid my staff, the franchiser and the bank, but not me. Um, Self-employment is hard. You have to be tough, resilient and adaptable. Yeah, absolutely. I remember um, times when we had the, the first retail outlet and we had staff. And if you had a, a tight week financially or a tight month rather financially, staff have to be paid. So the ones that go without are you. That's just how it is. To, to, to make the business survive, you, you're always the one that takes the cut. But, yeah, that's what it takes. So Sue, <coughs> Sue, out of Curiosity UK, says, I think this job is for me, but it's great to know others in the same gig and that I'm not the only one with these challenges. Yeah. And then Lee says, part-time reselling is the perfect side hustle. <laughs> side hustle. Side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I have the security of a wage and associated benefits, but on the side, I can make money by being smart and making good decisions. Yeah. And I think that is the ideal scenario, particularly if you're enjoying your work and it, and you get some satisfaction and, and job satisfaction from that. And then you enjoy doing reselling on the side. That, I, that I think, is the dream right there. Um, oh, yes, I did. what's that about the mode? Yeah, oh. I'll let you read that. King King on TV. I love reselling. My loft is full to the brim. <laughs> I get fed up with stuff that that don't work, though. Oh, right, yeah. Met Depeche Mode and sat next to Martin Gore at a Bowie gig in Irving, California. Wow. That's so cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, Depeche Mode are all big Bowie fans. They covered, um, oh, crumbs. Gonna forget instantly what Bowie song they covered. Heroes. A lot of people have covered heroes. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, we've if we're so far, far behind in the chat. We've probably you probably posted this ages ago, but thank you, Keely. Um, thanks for your insight. Um, great to have your input. 
clearly says. And thank you for the thank super you chat. For the super chat. Appreciate it. Shall we um, whiz? Oh, well, I Josh has to, linked Ellen's store. Yeah, I had to. It's jumped again, so I've missed a load more comments. Um, oh, there, there's an interesting question. If your channel went crazy, would you do YouTube full time, making enough to stop reselling? That's an interesting <laughs> question. If this channel went crazy, which is about reselling, it would be odd because there'd be no content. Yeah. If, um, I mean, I dabble with a Depeche Mode channel, which I don't think is ever going to go crazy. But if I could be a full time YouTuber, yes, in a flash, because I love it. It's so yeah. much fun. Um, but if, if this channel went crazy enough to earn a living from, which is a long way off, I don't know what the numbers would be on that, but 50K, which we're hopefully going to reach by Christmas, going to be tight, is, is nowhere near enough. Not on the views week. I suppose if you had a 50k channel, but your videos went crazy all the time, yeah, yeah maybe you could. Um, yeah, not on our, our current views. If the question is, would we drop reselling to do full time YouTube? Yes, Hand, hands down, totally for me. I think we'd carry it on because we love it. In in you know for fun. I always think we're getting older by the day. Who wants to see two old codgers on YouTube? You calling me an old codger? <laughs> Is that seriously what just happened? <laughs> Outrageous. Um, Rod says, if Ellen's selling those pumpkins, Trish would like to place an order. I don't think Ooh. she was, but I can put it to her. So, I'll, I'll see what yeah. I can do. I'll ask the pumpkin maker. Oh, 625 watching, but only 235 likes. Oh, oh. not anymore. Not anymore. We've bored them. Oh, we've bored them. We're down to 595. They're, they're jumping ship because <laughs> we've been on an hour and 10. What's that thing behind you that looks like a squat, squashed loaf of bread? Oh, that's a bear's bum. This. <laughs> <laughs> it's that talking bear thing that I haven't done anything with. Hi, Mandy. Uh, Mandy says we manage two wages just. Yeah, and it, it, it really depends on how, what your outgoings are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Mandy, by the way. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good question. Good Don't question. spend all day watching you. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, let's try and read a few more comments and we'll, we'll think about wrapping up. Um, uh, Matthew Wood says, I know so many friends closing shop for good due to COVID. Maybe online is even more the way forward. We've had chats about this. I mean, COVID has, has really put a few nails in, in high street businesses. I mean, some major chains have folded. A lot of independents will go and never come back. Um, and the likes of Amazon get bigger and eBay get bigger. You know, the, 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 the big guys get bigger and the little guys get squashed out of it again. Um, it's really sad. Um, so Robert says, what happens to the stuff that we have left over that doesn't sell? Generally, either goes back to charity or we um, sell it at a boot sale. Yeah. Basically. We will reduce prices to get our money back online if we can. That will be the first port of call, yeah. and then we'll take it off. And you've probably seen some of the videos where we go to a boot sale and have a big blowout and just get rid of stuff. And whatever's left, generally, we, we like to take it to cancer research. That would be our first port of call after that. Yeah. And try not to bring any of it back home. <laughs> Um, Ahmed says, you guys helped me to go full time now at 10k a month. Whoa, with all your bids. that's amazing. High five. <laughs> that's a really, really good, good news story. Yeah, I love hearing stuff like that. If if we had some tiny hand in helping that to happen, that's awesome. Um, thank, thankfully, haven't experienced that, but Ooh. we have had our Amazon hacked many years ago yeah yeah that was an experience yeah our amazon was hacked and suddenly we were selling loads of laptops and loads of ipods yeah. and and stuff and suddenly there was like tens if not hundreds of thousands of pounds going through our account and we were like whoa so somebody had hacked it and was selling things they didn't have merchant fulfilled and taking the money and it for years we used to uh, we were in touch with somewhere up north, wasn't it? Because the guy was being mm. prosecuted for fraud. And I was supposed to be going to court to make a statement and all of this. And in the end, it all fizzled out somehow. Yeah. Can't I remember. Know. But I never had to. 
go and I, I made lots of written statements about yeah. our experience of being hacked and what happened, etc. But I didn't have to go to court about it. Yeah. The worst thing about that was that Amazon took all of our listings down. We had to relist everything manually. Oh yeah. Oh. And at that point we were we were all in with Amazon. We weren't really yeah, doing it eBay. All, it wasn't um <coughs> you didn't have FBA back then. We so didn't do everything it. was merchant fulfilled. Oh, yeah. If you've seen the pictures I shared biggest. way back, perhaps we'll do another video someday. If you haven't seen that of, of our retail outlet downstairs, we had a full size basement. It was full, stacked full with, with racks and racks of, of stuff, stuff listed on Amazon. When we got hacked, it was actually before we had that basement, but all of our listings were switched off. Oh my goodness. I remember that now. Be prepared for things like that to happen to your business. Yeah. So Nursing16 says, any advice on handmade goods, how to move forward with selling on eBay? I want to go self-employed, but don't have a clue how to start. Um, well, we don't really sell handmade goods ourselves. Ellen is, but she's starting on Etsy rather than eBay, uh, which is a better platform for handmade, I would say. Um, it's, you know, she's not making enough money to live on certainly no 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 long but i mean that. i think you probably could build it up to something but um yeah i would say etsy give give etsy a go yeah etsy for crafty stuff yeah yeah definitely and yeah it's it's about being resourceful and creative um perhaps build up a a social media presence so you can talk about your stuff show yourself making it in youtube videos put yourself out there share share who you are and what you're about people love to invest in people yeah an instagram page um talking about what you do as well yeah um it, yeah that's i think that's a must have a social media yeah i um, think so promoting yourself as well i would much rather buy a handmade thing from somebody that i've watched <laughs> make it or or somebody that i've seen in the flesh and think yeah i, I love what they're doing and what they're about if i can relate a person to a thing i'm much mm. i'd much rather have that thing i was just going to mention that lady on all the videos has, has anyone else seen the lady how are you making um are you spending all your time selling things on etsy and going to craft fairs well you're wasting 100 percent of your time <laughs> oh yeah and i actually watched her the other day and it was quite interesting actually she talked about the fact that she built up her business by promoting herself, by sending samples of her work to influencers and to celebrities and to TV shows and, you know, that kind of thing. So that's that's quite a good idea, <laughs> actually. After I gave her the time of day, I just normally go, oh, shut up, woman. <laughs> Turn her off. Uh, Were yeah. you wanting to read yeah, that? Yeah, I was going to read that. Hi, Aidan. Um I think people forget that as retailers, we spend an hour in each charity shop digging for the treasure, desperately searching for phone signal. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into finding the gems for sure. Yeah. And Bailey says, I'm only part time. And when you get a sale in work, you think I've just earned more than more of one sale than I have all day. However, not every day is like that. Five year plan now four years. OK, stick at it. Yeah. Wow. We could be here all night reading your lovely comments. We could. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. So much chat. <sighs> oh, Lee says thanks. So Thank glad you. to reach that milestone. Yeah. Well done, Lee. It's like everything in life, and YouTube is a good kind of analogy for for starting a business, right? You have to start somewhere, and you have to be persistent. And put the work in as Lee has to build a channel, build a channel, build a following. Yeah. You know, it none of this is easy, and you don't really get any with it anywhere without hard work. Yeah. And it's the same for this channel as it was for our business. Yeah. It doesn't you don't click your fingers and go, oh, there we go. Yeah. So Ahmed, who commented earlier, says um uh, they went full time after three years. Right. People like you guys have been really helpful. Started when I was 16. Wow. See, so, and there you go, full time after three years, you know, so getting things in place, getting the momentum, building it up and then taking the plunge. Yeah. And Becca says to be successful full time, people need to think logically about every aspect. 
We all say the magic number of 10 listings, but even that means you need to source 70 items per week. Can you get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And we used to be much more structured in that way. Again, we, we are at a point where we have to do a lot less than we used to do. We work a lot less hard than we used to because of financial things we put in place that have got us to this position now. Um, yeah. I keep having, having to repeat that because being... <laughs> oh, look at that. Right. I can read that one out. I've a handwritten erasure set list from their third ever gig in 1985, torn from the stage by myself. Do you think that would sell on eBay? Undoubtedly, if, if you can prove the provenance, I guess it would be it would be your word that that's what it was. But that's so cool. Their third ever gig. Wow. So that's yeah. Back when they were touring Wonderland. That's not a place. That was the album. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great place, though. I met DM when they were on top. Of, how far behind are we? When they were on top of the pops first time, my dad worked for the BBC, and I spent the day there with them. Wow! When they were young, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed popsters. So that would have been eighty-one, I guess. You're not anywhere near being an old codger, so you're stunning. <laughs> hey, I'm an old codger. <laughs> um jesse says he can monetize youtube in lots of ways not just google ads this is true yep yep we we did a sponsored video you may have seen it recently with scotch where they they kindly got in touch with us and said uh would you like to see if our new thingy but bob what was it called stretch and seal scratch scratch and sniff <laughs> flex and seal <laughs> flex and seal yeah can can you try our product and see if it works and we're like yeah sure we'll have a go <laughs> um would we ever run a shop again or is that ship sailed we keep having crazy moments where we think we could and then we rem remember <laughs> probably not but we would be foolish to say no it won't ever happen um but this is good um kirsten says my shop is doing better than it was before covid that's wow. amazing Wow. I love the things that I see that you post on Instagram. Uh, just got a line of candles and I'm loving the yeah. Christmas decorations. I wish you were nearer. <laughs> I'd pop in. I saw a picture of a little uh, little fuzzy bee of Christmas decoration, a little bee yeah. I think you posted on Instagram. Yeah, some of them are so cool. Fair trade Christmas ornaments. <laughs> Hi, Manjet. So single mum and doing reselling on eBay really helps me out. So many good, So many good ideas from you getting ready if things change with work was that magic that we bumped into at this jumble trail last time yes right no, was it this yes it was, was one yes, down there was. somewhere yes. yeah i'm getting confused so many jumble trails right um where do we get our items from when car boots are shut um we tend to source oh quickly. more than enough in the boot sale season so we have a permanent backlog that you see loitering in the background here. Um, but then you've got options, depending on where you are. Charity shops, very hit and miss, but it's an yeah. option. I mean, pre-COVID, pre it was um, jumble, tr no, jumble sales. Yeah. Um, yeah. And tabletop sales. Auction. And that kind of thing. Yeah, auction. Some people do really well out of auction. Um, we haven't gone back to auction for so long. I know. Um, it's all online at we the had, moment. We had plans this year to, to source for Amazon at auction and go buying pallet loads of new stock. And none of that happened because COVID came along and messed it up. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's Grenin's question. <laughs> how are you doing with the dreaded C word? Yes. Which word are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, COVID wise, if that's what you're on about, Rob, uh, we are now in a three tier system in the UK. They've complicated it just for fun now. Um, and we're in the lowest band. Yeah. So we're currently. not we're not in full <laughs> lockdown here. Currently, but we are surrounded by a tier two at the moment. And um, <laughs> tier two are what? Or it was more moving upwards towards us, I think. What's tier two? What um, are they not allowed to do? That's more restrictions. And I, I don't know get so confused it's really confusing rob and so then have to remember what we're allowed to do <laughs> and then tier three i think is properly locked down tier, tier don't, three is pretty bad don't go yeah. out stuff 
Um, but yeah, I hope you're yeah. well, Rob. And uh, so Stacey, who we met today, said, Vinny used to have a full time job, but after going back after lockdown, we got stuck on a zero hour contract, so decided to take up reselling for extra cash and absolutely loves it. Um, he uses he your uses your clips, clips as, as insert or, word here. <laughs> I don't know if it's further down, anyway, <laughs> not sure. TikTok okay, channels making millions selling slime interesting what well, have you you got a tiktok channel making millions selling slime i hope so that would be <laughs> awesome <laughs> right should we read deb's out and then we will honestly think about wrapping up yeah we should do it's half a slime uh hi deb says hi both lovely to see you both so energizing to watch wow that's good to know i'm scrolling right to the bottom i've been on ebay for over 10 years and etsy for two years sales have slowed the last six months by about 20 percent, but still making a living just well i'm glad to hear that. i'm not glad to hear it's slowed but i'm glad to hear you're still making ends meet and persevering yeah wow 10 years the dreaded c words is cobs we don't have the cobs to start discussion on this channel it's a roll. <laughs> Spread roll. Yeah. So really sorry if we've missed anybody's comments. Um, we tried to answer as much as we possibly could. Here. Yeah, they're in tier three. Oh, they're is that gonna Lancashire. affect is that gonna affect the shop? I, I think the shops can still stay open. Oh, okay. I don't know if yeah. you were in at the beginning shop. I did refer to you and 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 how you at, shared at your journey. <laughs> beginning of the chat. Did I say what did I say? At the beginning shop. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> We were referring to you at sharing your journey of how how tough it can be to make the transition to full time. Um, and that's what we talked about. I hope you don't mind being referred to. And we've been loving your vlogs, as I know many, many people have, um, as you yeah, learn the whole new shebang of uh bricks and mortar retail. Yeah, it's been really interesting and it's certainly taken us back. <laughs> venturing into the unknown right yeah. it's it's uh you've got to have the balls to do it just a quick one um we don't have estate sales i wish we did because they look like they could be really good fun actually yeah i remember rob having a discussion with somebody about that i think he was actually chat chatting with sam reselling polly about the difference over here mm. generally if a somebody dies and their estate isn't sold off from the house as i've seen done in america um, either the yeah. family distribute it or sell it off themselves or they get a, a house clearance firm in to take it all away which is yeah very different okay i think we're going to um okay <laughs> the dreaded c word is cash <laughs> is andrew allowed any yet no don't let Andrew handle money. That would be not allowed out the house. <laughs> that would that would be crazy. That was yeah. funny. That was so funny. Yeah. Right. Okay, we really had better let you all go now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you if you commented. I hope we managed to read out a few. Um, we wanted to touch on that a little bit because we'd seen a few posts that were interesting. Um, I hope we we come across and we we show all sides of reselling and the reality of, of what it is and that's what we wanted to talk about really yeah and we'll end on sarah's comment here Lo we? lovely to read everyone's story and no i'm not alone in the madness that is reselling yeah good point well put <laughs> right i'm gonna go and try and put my toggle back on for anyone who wasn't in the chat earlier. I've thrown it in the bin oh. now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. We will be back on tom tomorrow, no, Monday. Won't. won't we? Uh, I've, I don't know. I've got a video to go Oh, up. okay. It was a pick Not live. It was a pick and orders video. From, we won't be back live. From Friday, I think. Um, I will try and continue the, the current pace of videos. I've been enjoying it. Um, let me know uh, on the videos if you enjoy seeing shorter but more regular content and we'll see you next week yeah so uh words of wisdom you're not allowed to use the same one again people have been getting fed up with you just saying the same stuff every week i think you should come up with something new personally stay safe and sanitize <laughs> have a good week everyone